You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. Oh, hold up. Smell test. Go ahead. Sniff those pits. Now, your bits. Feet, toes, come on. Ugh. Could be fresher, right? It's all good. Old Spice Total Body Deodorant Spray is gentle enough to use all over your body, giving you 24-7 lasting freshness with daily use, from pits to toes and down below. So every smell test gets a... <sighs> Shop for Old Spice Total Body Deodorant. It's winter, and you can now get almost anything you need for the coldest months of the year delivered with Uber Eats. What do we mean by almost? Well, you can't get a ski slope delivered, but you can get dish soap delivered. Sunshine, that's a no. But a bottle of wine, that's a yes. A snow angel, sorry, no. But angel hair pasta, Uber Eats can definitely get you that. Get almost, almost anything delivered with Uber Eats. Order now. Alcohol and select markets. Product availability may vary by region. See app for details. Actually, it's the, it's the lead play in our, in our offense. Kelly tackle. The defensive end is over. The defense Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome into Packers Total Access. My name is Clayton. You can check us out on Packernet.com. You can find me on Twitter at Packers underscore access. I'm joined alongside my good buddy Tim live in Green Bay tonight, and we're just going to talk a little a little bit of Packers running game. We're going to talk uh, some quarterback stats and uh, some delusional Bears fans, and then we'll also hit on a little bit of Packers Saints uh, preview, I guess you could say, uh, a little matchup preview there. But, Tim, how was your day, buddy? Man, it was good, you know. Great day. It's always a great day in Green Bay, man. Title Town. I love living here, you know? Absolutely, dude. I'm jealous every day. What's the weather like right now up there? Uh, it's a little little chilly, breezy, you know, 60s during the day. It gets a little cool at night. Fall is definitely upon us, but uh, beautiful football weather, I'll tell you that. Hopefully it doesn't rain this weekend uh, too bad for the, for the Saints game, but uh, there is some rain in the forecast coming up, so. Gotcha. I tell you, man, I'm I'm a sucker for weather games personally. Now, I, it's easy for me to say sitting on my couch, right? But uh, <laughs> not having to not getting to attend a game. But man, I love weather games at Lambeau. It's just there's just something to it. Have you been to a game out at East Green Bay High yet? Do you watch high school football much, Tim? No, I have not. I've been meaning to get over there because it's, it's relatively relatively close to to our house. And uh, no, I got to get over there though. I've I've been over there a bunch. Uh, you know, just to go to the on the Heritage Trail there and see City yeah. Stadium. But no, I got to get to a game that in uh, De Pere I want to check out as well. It's so so freaking cool that the uh, that local Green Bay high schoolers get to play on on Old City Stadium field. You know what I mean? It's just I love it. Dude. Love the love the tradition for sure. Let's go to the chat here. We got Doe Soldier in the house. We got Zane Strong, Eric Sutherland, Emilio, um, Larry in the house. United Bates, R Showers. AJJ and Vahan, I guess is how you say it. Hi, everyone. Go Pack Go from California. Hey, appreciate you joining us for sure. Let's uh, let's jump right into it. And we're going to be taking questions tonight, gang, um, here in the chat, too. We may have a caller or two. You know, Wednesday or Tuesday is usually kind of a slow night. There's no injury news, nothing like that. So we're going to kind of uh, hit on a few topics. We may wrap up early. Some of you guys have been on a stream with me all day long. We, uh, Went live and interviewed Mike Wall earlier, talking about the running game. Got some really good nuggets from that conversation. Um, we did a chalk talk, learned a lot, ready to bury that game ball finally from the Atlanta game and moving on to uh, to the Saints. So we'll just kind of hang out, talk a little ball tonight. First things first, the running game, Tim. Um, you know, went live earlier with Mike Wall and just a, a few takeaways I got. And, um, you know, you, every time I speak to Mike, I feel like I'm going to go in 
um, expecting one thing and come out the other side going, man, I was wrong on that or, or I didn't see that coming, right? Really, there wasn't nothing that caught me off guard today. Um, one thing that he did say, and we were talking about the running game and more specifically that play with A.J. Dillon on third and short there in the fourth quarter where when I watched it initially, you know, I'm – I'm basically bashing A.J. Dillon saying, man, he's stumbling, getting to the line. It's on him, right? And then, of course, I go back and watch the tape, and I realize what happened to the offense line. And also realizing that the stumble was more of a stutter step because everything got blown up right off the bat as far as the initial um, gap in attacking on that running play. And Mike Wall said the same exact thing. And really what he came away with was needing to simplify things and, we heard that last year. We heard that from the quarterback, number 12, and everybody immediately bashed him, <laughs> right, and said, you know, he's selfish. He wants to call the plays. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He's He just hates the coach, or not necessarily hates the coach, but hates the scheme, and he's never going to make it work, all that good stuff. But, uh, man, when he said simplify, it sounds like they're trying to do so much. You know, they, and we talked about it, Tim, that first week against Chicago – all the different formations they threw at the Bears, all the different types of run. You had wide zone, you had mid zone, you had gap, you had duo, um, you had a little bit of counter, you had a you know a pin and pull toss. You had all of pretty much the whole repertoire, right? And it kind of feels like they need to back off a little bit and just focus on you know the simplicity of the running game, especially when AJ Dillon's in there, because I think we would both agree he's not the same type of ba- uh, back as. Uh, as a boy, Aaron Jones, right? Oh gosh, no, not at all. And I don't think anyone ever thought that. If anything, that's what we love about them is that they're uh, complementary, right? Thunder and lightning. I just feel like uh, we need a little more thunder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and 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 you know, I'm not sitting here saying that AJ Dillon, after watching it, had a good game. That's not the case at all. But like Mike was pointing out, it's just so obvious that he's not comfortable running behind that offensive line. Now that's one opinion, right? And I think it's a strong opinion because it's a former NFL offensive lineman. But then when you watch the tape and you see it, and then you look at the PFF grade of the offensive line and the run blockings in the tank, right? Sooner or later, you got to call a spade a spade. You know, Uh, that's one thing that he pointed out to me. He said, they're trying to do too much schematically in the running game. Um, they need uh, uh, to ask a little less of the o- offensive line horizontally. And that's something that Ryan pointed out. And I, I always go to this because, you know, Ryan will tell you he's not an X's and O's guy. He's not a film study guy, although he will study the film. And I think he's way, way more knowledgeable than he lets on when it comes to the game of football and understanding the ins and outs. He went and watched that Detroit game, that final game of the season. And I remember the podcast immediately following that game the next day. And, uh, and as I was listening to it, he was basically saying they're they're expecting this offensive line to do things that's not physically possible. And that's exactly what Mike Wall was saying. And and I'll just point it out real quick, and then we'll get to the chat, guys. We see you guys in here lighting it up. Appreciate you hopping along for us. I'm going to share a play here. Hopefully you can see it okay, Tim. I'll try to explain it, and then I can also – yeah, I'll just try to explain it. Probably be the best way to do this, okay? So this was the third and short play. I know it's kind of hard to uh, – To see, I'm going to drop this banner real quick. We'll bring that back up in a second. So basically on that third and short play in the fourth quarter where A.J. stumbles, it was a 20 eye tight stack right. I think it was duo. Some people would say it's it's zone mid. I'm pretty sure it was duo because you had double teams set up across the line. You're trying to attack down the field. It's vertical power, right? And um, if you'll really key in on the left guard, and it's kind of hard to see. I tried to draw it out. But what I want you to notice is the defensive tackle, how he lined up kind of in that one tech, and he crosses the face and and really tries to engage with the center. The left guard, what they were asked to do here, the left guard, Royce Newman of all people, was asked to double team the defensive tackle as he's moving to the right, which it looks like he's not as far out of place, but imagine that D tackle ending right there on the center in this illustration. And then the left guard had to turn his body completely around and try to shield off that mock that was firing in that B gap. And that's where the play design, that play, the run was designed to go. Okay. So as AJ Dillon gets ready to take the ball, take the handoff from Jordan Love, essentially what you got is the H back and DeGuara having to nail the wheel backer coming off the edge. The right end crashed in, but I got to say, the left tackle did a really good job getting position just to cut him off from, from completely blowing the play up. But when that mock fired, 
Royce had no shot to block the mic. And you can literally see A.J. Dillon, as soon as he gets the ball, he looks up and he sees it and he stutters. He literally chops his feet and is trying to decide, do I need to go left, do I need to go right, because they're blowing this play up. Now, in the process, I think what he it wasn't so much he tripped as it was he decided, I'm just going to try to get underneath them and reach this first down. And without even drawing this up for Mike and mentioning the play specifically, he pointed it out. And I told him, yeah, that was Royce at guard, right? He's And, and he if you go back and watch it, he does a great job kind of explaining his his perspective on it, you know, Mike's perspective. And he's like, you're asking me to double down here, right? Block to the next level, turn completely around, and now try to get the the Mike on his heels and drive him down the field. And and essentially, what Mike said was, "It's impossible. You're asking these guys to do too much in a run blocking game." And he went on to talk about how when he played for Mike Sherman, and and, and he loved Mike Sherman. Mike Sherman was an offensive line coach, right? And that's why they had such a good running game in the early 2000s when Mike was there with Rivera and Cliffy and all those guys. Um, and I think, uh, you know, at one point, uh, Amon Green rushed for 2,000 yards or right at 2,000 yards, just, you know, one of the best rushing years in the history of the Green Bay Packers, if not the best. And he said there was times they would draw stuff on the board and stuff up on the board coordinators would, and they'd be like, we, we can't do that. And he said Mike Sherman was great at, saying, at, at understanding that and going, okay, I trust my guys. I'm going to put them in a position to win. So I think you've got a little bit of that going on. And, again, I didn't come in today thinking that's what's going on. But talking to Mike, going back and watching the film again, doing chalk talk, it's pretty clear they're trying to do too much on the offensive line, man. Is that kind of how you're seeing it too as a fan watching the game? What do you think about that take? Or do you think we're off base there? No, I think that that's spot on. And Mike is great. We get the real perspective here. Like you said, you know, this guy, this guy did it. So I'm going to list, I'm going to defer to Mike Wall's uh, expertise here. And uh, yeah, can you imagine being AJ Dillon and getting the ball and just you, you, the first thing you see is, you know, the mic is winning this battle and, and that's where you're going. That's where you're supposed to go with the football. Yeah. Uh, and then, and we all know the minute, like you said, the minute AJ D- Dillon uh, shuffles his feet or chops his feet, it's, it's going to be a bad scenario. That's what we want Aaron Jones to do that. Aaron Jones is the shifty uh, light on his toes running back. Uh, AJ Dillon is supposed to be our power uh, North and South uh, running back. So seeing anytime he's got to shuffle his feet. Yeah. That's, that's not a good scenario, but I mean, to the overall point, I, I agree. I think we've talked about um, LaFleur's offense, uh, as a whole, wanting to have the illusion of complexity. Um, and, and what actually ends up happening is it becomes complex. <laughs> and it, it really is complex. And, uh, you know, I, I agree. I think the, the point about, you know, how Sherman used to kind of defer to his linemen and kind of say, hey, well, what are you guys comfortable doing? Uh, can we push the boundaries of what, what your comfort level is a little bit? Or what, are, what can we absolutely not do versus what can we try to do uh, might be a good approach because, um, you know, we can't complain about execution if if guys are being able to do things or being asked to do things that they're just not they just that they're not physically capable of doing, like Mike said. Yeah, and you know, you're putting them in a position to fail, essentially. He said at other places, not in Green Bay, that they would come in and they'd say, OK, here's how we're drawing it up. And they would draw it up on the board and an offensive lineman would raise their hand and say, you know, hey, we, we can't do that. Like, I, I can't get to that spot. And because they see it on the board and in modern terms, because it happens on Madden, <laughs> right, <laughs> then then, yes, you can make it happen. You can do it. And uh, he said, then we would get in there and the play would get blown up and they're looking at us going, hey, why didn't you get to your guy? <laughs> I told you I couldn't get to the guy. Like, I don't know what you expect. So. Um, it was just and, and you know, a, an opposing team is going to see that too. That defense is going to see that. They're going to look at that line and go, "Hey, man, they can't get over, or they're not, they're not getting off. Mm-hmm. That we can run this all day, and they're not, gonna, they're not going to block the mic on this, on this play." <laughs> so you know, it's like, I mean, if we see it, I'm, I'm ninety nine point nine percent sure the opposing D is seeing that too. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Let's go to the – well, before we go to the chat, guys, we're getting ready to key it up, and then we'll get into the next topic. Another thing he said, too, Tim, I asked him this. I said, all right, it's it's obvious Elton Jenkins is going to be out for at least a few weeks, maybe 
maybe more, right? So let's assume he's going to be out for a minimum of three to four weeks. Who would you put at left guard? Not who are they going to put at left guard. Who would Mike Wall put at left guard? And he said, you know, well, they played Royce there, and he kind of, you know, danced around that a bit. And he said, if it were me, if you're asking me, I would put Rasheed Walker at left guard if box healthy. He said, you put Rasheed Walker at left guard, he said, because he's got great feet. When Mike Wall says an offensive lineman has good feet, and he'll be the he, – his whole stance, Tim, is you win with technique. You win with – the fundamentals, the basics. If you don't have good footwork, I don't care how strong you are. I don't care how fast you are. I don't care how good your punch is. If you've got crappy feet, you're going to get beat in the NFL. I didn't mean to rhyme, but I do it all the time. Okay. But that's what he said. <laughs> and, and literally, as he said that, I'm going, imagine Rashid Walker at left guard next to, next to our boy, uh, David Bakhtiari. If indeed box knee, the swelling goes down. That's I think that's a pretty stout pass pass blocking combination there too. So if LaFleur does take a step back, let's simplify the running game a little bit. You've got Rashid filling in for Elton. I'm not saying it's an upgrade. I'm not saying it's nowhere near an upgrade over Elton. Please don't take that the wrong way. But when you think of Rashid Walker over Royce Newman, I, that sounds a lot better to me on the surface. What do you think? I agree. And it, it should go hand in hand with what, we're doing as an entire team, which is it's the youth move, movement, right? Let the kids play. We've been saying this, you know, since the off season. So I agree. And, you know, we all know what we're getting with Newman. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, Mike's absolutely right, but I don't, I don't think it takes a uh, NFL veteran to make that observation. You know, we can all surmise that. Yeah, I would agree. Now that of course is, you know, we have the asterisk, is Bach going to be at left tackle? If he is, then Rasheed Walker makes sense at left guard. If we need left, if we need Rasheed Walker at left tackle, then we have to, you know, adjust the other way. And we have to ask ourselves other questions. Now who, now who goes to left guard if Walker's at uh, left tackle? Yeah, that's, that's where it gets real shaky real quick. But we both unanimously agreed, leave Tom at right tackle. That oh, and yeah. He raved over Tom's. He said, we talked about it on this show last year. We talked about his footwork, right? He always goes back to the footwork. And now he put on a little bit of weight. He said he's definitely cracking on the plus side of 300 pounds now. He's got enough bulk that he's handling his own. He really liked him at right tackle. That was exciting for me because, man, Tom is so young and he's so cheap right now. But, like, <laughs> you know, a former NFL player would be quick to say, hey, look, let's get him Let's get him a contract sooner than later, right? Let's get him paid because he's that good. Um, so I thought that was a really cool comment as well. I'm um, here in the chat. Our shower says we staying at Tim's for the draft. I'm sure we, uh, I'm sure we'd bring the libations. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> Mike Hebring, I ain't going to ask you to give us an answer there, Tim, just sleep on it. All right? <laughs> <laughs> Mike Hebring in the chat said Tennessee um, had, has led the league and rushed the, the past couple years. What do they have or do different than the Packers? Um, I'm going to dive into that for you, Mike, not tonight, because I want time to look at the tape. Hopefully I can find time to do that. It's uh, with all these guests and stuff that we've got lined up, it's going to be difficult, but I think we can at least do a little bit of digging on the surface. Who's their head coach. Yeah. That's my first reaction. Mike Rabel is, you know, you, you got a defensive minded head coach right there. So yep. that would be my, uh, you know, initial reaction to that. Yeah, and your teams take on the identity of your head coach. That's the way it works. You know, why does Justin Fields look like Cheeks right now? He's got a defensive coordinator as a head coach. I'm just saying, <laughs> right? Why is Jordan Love leading the league in touchdown passes with no interceptions? Because we have the quarterback whisperer as a head coach. There you go. And that typically that hire is a direct reflection of ownership slash management slash whatever you want to call the Green Bay Packers board of directors and saying, here's the direction. We want our team to go, right? We want to be an offensive-minded team. We want to be a defensive-minded team. Now, some of them, maybe they don't put as much thought into it. You know, some of these billionaires, when they uh, go to hire a, a GM that's going to hire a head coach, but if they got the right people in place, those are kind of the trends you're looking for. You're looking to make those decisions. But, Mike, on the surface, that's the first thing that comes to mind. Schematically, I would like to dig into that. And like uh, our shower says in the chat, they've got uh, Simmons, who is an ultra beast. Mm -hmm. right, so look at this. we got Robert Allen. Says hello from the Philippines. Eight, eight m. I don't know if that's eight a.m. Maybe Ben Finnell been talking about Gary's soft edge and Jair drop off for a couple years. Hard not to notice. 
I love both those players. I think they're great players. I think they've been great players in the past. Um, it's one game, but everything that you said, if Ben Fennell said that, I'm telling you, if you go back and watch my chalk talk, I think it was three plays that I outlined where, unfortunately, Gary did have a very soft edge. He broke contain on read options. And then, of course, Jair. Um, Jair had one of the worst games I've ever seen him play as a Green Bay Packer. Now, with all that being said, you point that out and say, okay, if two of our best defenders had a bad game and we still lost by only one point, that's pretty encouraging. What do you think, Tim? Like, I mean, we played a pretty bad game there offensively in the first quarter, right? defensively in the second half, and we still only lost by one point on the road to what I think the majority of people would agree is a better football team. But what do you think, man? I agree with that, and I, I think that this is going to go a long way for the Packers and uh, this young team learning learning how to play with a lead. You know, learn, you know, they didn't have to play from behind until there was 58 seconds left in that game. Um, so if anything, the lesson that we should be trying to learn here is how, you know, we, we build a lead. How do we protect that lead? You know, and we can talk about the offense and the defense and who like we all we we, our initial reactions are always to try and point the finger and find the blame, place the blame somewhere. Well, that that's great. But the the blame is on everyone. (laughs) So, you know, we had an offense that wasn't converting and we had a defense that couldn't stop a runny nose. So what what does that leave you? That leaves you blowing a multi score lead and losing by a point on the road. So it's encouraging in a sense. Yes. You know, like, God, we played that bad and we didn't get boat raced, but I mean, uh, I, it's still just as disheartening to, to lose that way. I mean, we talked about that in the post game, you know, it, that's what made it so heartbreaking, but sometimes the biggest heartbreaks teach you the biggest lessons in life and in football. So hopefully the, the young boys learn this time. And, you know, with Rashawn Gary's response and, and what was being reported in the locker room, how each position group was huddled up and they weren't in a hurry to get out of there. They wanted to talk about it. They wanted to talk about changing changing things moving forward and, and what went right, what went wrong. That's a great sign for a young football team that it, it matters to them, right? They know. They know one got away from them. There's no doubt in my mind. And uh, I just love how they're rallying together. And you got LaFleur being snippy with the media like – there, everyone is like, this is not acceptable. And that's definitely the attitude you want with your football team. We got dead fish in the house. Um, our shower says Edgar is still one of my all time favorite Packers. I'm assuming he's talking about Edgar Bennett. Oh um, man. Was he fun to watch? God, he was great. He'll man Dorsey Levens. Was it Dorsey Levens that made the, the catch on the wheel route in the corner of the end zone, in the NFC championship against the Panthers. Am I thinking right? That famous picture where he, or famous footage of him going up, grabbing it and literally just, Becoming stiff as a board, making sure his feet got in bounds, and just kind of <laughs> let the defender. I'm pretty in. sure that was, yeah. I think that was Dorsey. number twenty-five. Yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. Edgar Bennett and Dorsey Levens, man, a lot of a lot of fun watching those guys for sure. Uh, let's see here. We got Mark in the chat it says uh, Mike Sherman was an offensive genius. Uh, that was the running gun days, man. I'll tell you what, he uh, he just kept things simple, and sometimes you know, simple is the way to go. It's you know, like uh, Mike Wall said on a previous conversation we had. We would run power, and he named the specific power play. He said, well, I bet we ran it nine times in a row. And just like, they ain't stopping it, keep running it. Yeah, right? absolutely. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, no doubt. Um, and then, of course, uh, the number one Packer fan, man, can Green Bay uh, hit Mike, Mike Wall as a con- – hire Mike Wall as a consultant, please, LOL. He, he does a lot of stuff that people don't know about, not with the Packers, but with uh, process to perform working with several – and I, it's not my place to talk about it. He could talk about it, but working with several very successful offensive linemen in today's game. Also some stuff with the youth, um, chasing the kids all around with them playing sports. He's a, he's a busy guy. And, man, it's so crazy, too, because when I ask him to come on the show, it's just like immediate response, yeah, man, what do you need? And uh, I just love that about him, man. He, you could just tell he loves football. It's something that's always going to be a part of his life and he's always going to be passionate about um, for sure. Let's see here what else we got in the chat. Emilio said, sometimes we just need to go old school and just man up the dude across from you. You know, that's it, it sounds so simple, Emilio, but it's exactly what I was thinking talking to Mike is like in that play with A.J. Dillon, rather than trying to get – and it's what he said, but let's stop trying to get cute here and, and try to make these yeah. schemes more difficult than they need to be. He's like, that, that's the same vibe I got, Emilio. If you, if you run that play back again, I'm going to show it one more time here, and I know it's hard to see, but I want you to really key in – I'm going to tag that real quick. I think I got it. Oh, maybe not. Let's see here. 
All right. Um, if you really key in, imagine that left guard, right? The center just fo focuses on the D tackle, and the left guard just goes to the next level and smacks that mock. You've got a first down, right? I mean, there's there's no problem there. But you tried to get cute with the double team and then work your way around. What they weren't anticipating is that D tackle in the one tech or what could have been a two eye. They weren't expecting him to try to cross the face of the center, right? Right. Of course, they were firing the wheel and the mock pretty, pretty freely as soon as they seen run and hindsight's 2020, but yeah, if you just line up there and go, you know what H don't even worry about the edge, let, you know, left tackle get to that wheel H just kind of sell off the outside. As you go to the hole, a left guard attack the mock center manhandle the D tackle. Let's just blow them off the freaking ball and pick up this first down. And it just didn't happen. And like Emilio saying, it's uh something that simple, probably the right way to go. So um, I hope they do simplify things. And again, I know Aaron got crucified for mentioning it last year, but it's so true. When I asked Mike, I said, do you think that's what Aaron was talking about last year? It was a long winded answer because I think he was trying to think it through as he's answering it and make sure he wasn't. But at the end of it, it was, yeah, it's probably what he was talking about. You're just trying to do too much. You know, you're trying to do too much. So um, love it. All right. Mike, Mike Hebring in the chat says AJ is a gap scheme back not a wide zone back it never was a good fit completely agree and that falls on goody you know love aj Dillon. love everything about him i think he's got a lot of talent um for the right scheme maybe a derrick henry type uh scheme but it's exactly what uh mike said too he's like you've got aj aj Dillon. he said i think aj Dillon's a good back but he's not aaron jones right they do two totally different things and he said you, you're expecting aj he and he pointed this out tim and i'm sure you remember he said, you know, the first couple of plays, what did we see? We seen them trying to get him on the edge and running pitch plays, toss plays to him. He said, yeah. that's not A.J. Dillon, right? The only toss that worked was that what that direct toss right up the gut. I think right. he did hit the A-gap or or maybe it was. I'm trying to remember what play that was. But that, that one was a chunk run because he had some legs behind him, had his momentum, and just here hit this hole and go. And, uh, yeah, it's it's tough to watch the wide zone and off the edge stuff with him sometimes. I mean, every once in a while he'll break one off, but I mean, not with any real consistency. Yeah, definitely. Uh, our showers in the chat said, I agree. They don't use AJ the right way. He is for sure worth having. That's how the conversation started with Mike was I said, you know, there's a lot of people, myself included, you watch the tape and you see AJ stuttering, you see him stumbling. And it's just like, man, he, is is AJ playing that bad? Is it the blocking? Is it the scheme? What, and and you could see he kind of perked up as he went to answer. He went to bat for AJ like no, they're they're trying to do too much and it's not playing into uh, what their strength is for sure. So uh, Emilio said Tom was practicing snapping during pregame. That's interesting. Um, hmm. That's very interesting. That's the thing too. You got the injury to Elton Jenkins. You know, there's been talks. We talked about it. You know, is Josh Myers a, a liability? And he kind of defended Josh Myers, too. He didn't say Josh Myers is playing good. But, again, he's kind of pointing out that they're not playing to their offensive line strengths and they're making things too complicated. You know, he pointed out a, a couple specific plays there, too. Um, yeah. This may be the, the time or, or, you know, this may be the season that maybe uh, Coach LaFleur kind of actually, you know, like comes to that realization. You know, hey, I got a young team. Um a lot of new faces. Maybe, maybe we need to simplify a little bit because I'm sure even a simplified Matt Lafleur offense is still going to be complex <laughs> in its own right. way. So, I mean, maybe, maybe he does. Uh, you know, not to sound you know like a jerk, but like maybe if he just dials it back a little, you know, dial it, dial it down just a click or two, and see if we can find some success. Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news. So don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's Us Days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us Days at U.S. Cellular, exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. The legends are true. Overwhelming power. The sauce of destiny. Yes! 
The most legendary sauce has arrived as McDonald's transforms into the anime world of Wickdonald's. The greatest flavors unite in all new savory chili McDonald's sauce to make your 10 piece Wick Nuggets, fries, and Sprite ultra powerful. Unlock manga comics with every meal and sit down for a new anime short every week only at Wickdonald's. Ba da ba ba ba. Go! And participate in McDonald's for a limited time while supplies last. Ah yes, the magnificent Trolley Sourbright Crawler, also known as Trollicus Brightolus. The worm's captivating neon colour makes it an easy gummy prey. Trolley! It's a surprisingly sour, invitingly chewy, staggeringly snackable species unlike anything else found on this planet. Eat me! Delicious. Visit trolley.com to shop now. Trolley, eat me! This episode is brought to you by CarMax. CarMax is putting peace of mind back in car shopping by putting you in the driver's seat to find a ride that's right for you. Because CarMax believes you shouldn't just settle for a car. You should love your car. That's why every car they sell has CarMax certified quality so you can be sure with upfront pricing that's the same for every customer. So don't settle. Find love at first drive. CarMax, the way car buying should be. Start shopping now at CarMax.com. Yeah. For sure. Um, Mark in the chat says, we need a Tom clone for uh, left tackle. Hey, man, if you could find those growing on trees, get us a, a, get us a couple more. As a matter of fact, let's, let's, let's try to find four more. And when Bach leaves, we're good to go, right? Right. <laughs> so you find those sitting around, make sure you pick those up. I'll pay you back later. I yeah, promise. we want a, a 22, 23, and 24-year-old, please. That would be great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we got Connor Jansen in the chat. This is a great question. Do you think AJ would be good to be used more at fullback instead of DeGuara? It seems he seems to be a better blocker than him. And we did some of that last year. You know, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you that AJ could be a better blocker than DeGuara, but I don't think that's saying much. I don't mean to be mean, but DeGuara did have a nice, a nice block in that game on, on a play action pass. I will say that a play action sift, but I, I just don't see A.J. Dillon as a blocking back. I haven't seen it, and I'm not saying I'm right and he can't be. Um, I just haven't seen it on tape, and the grades would uh, kind of back that up too if if indeed you do like PFF or at least use it as another reference like we do. Um, all right, let's see here. Daniel in the chat said, let's be honest. Arthur Smith has designed a very nice run game that puts defenders in tough angles to make tackles. We flowed too fast, and Bijan was able to cut. That's the other thing that I think a lot of people were missing um, as far as their scheme. There was a ton of cutback, and it wasn't necessarily wide zone as much as it was wide-ish. It's like they were shooting for the B gap and then cutting back A, you know. Um, they were definitely looking for the cutback, and, and I'm telling you, man, Bijan is a, he's a stud. And there's some people trying to downplay that, Tim, like, oh, no, you, well, he – if he's that good, he'd be doing it against other teams. You watch. If he stays healthy, watch what he does this year. That that dude, I'm telling you, man, he was, in my opinion, he was probably I, – I know he was at least top three in this last draft, players overall, you know, as far as overall talent. It's just running back is so – the value is so diminished in today's game. You know, that's the thing. Um, Daniel in the chat also said it's hard – it's hard and flow and stay a half a man behind when you don't have visual on the ball because of play design angles. And then the ball carrier just shows up at nowhere and quick hits. It's very true. Very true. They, and it, there is a little bit of that um, deceptiveness, I guess you could say, in that Atlanta running game for sure. Um, all right, let's do this. Uh, before we get into the next topic, which is going to be on some quarterback stats, and I'm, I'm kind of excited about this. I've seen a delusional Bears fan uh, online. And I thought we were just one, only one. <laughs> well, he was, he was out there floating in the ocean by himself at this specific moment. Um, didn't see too many takers back in what he was saying, but I was just like, man, how can you be <laughs> that delusional? But before we do that, <laughs> we do want to say that today's show is brought to you by old Southern barbecue smokehouse. They've got five locations in Rice Lake, Hudson, Arden Hills, Minneapolis, and Shakopee. Um, if you're there around those areas, you can go in house and eat. They've got, Awesome barbecue, awesome sides, the whole nine yards. Um, also, if you're looking to have people over for a Packer party, you know, you're getting some people together to watch the game, whether it's the Packers, Monday night football, Sunday night football, whatever, you don't want to cook. 
and you want to have some awesome food brought in, you can check out their catering menu and uh, give them a call for that. And they'll take care of all that hassle for you. Also, if you're at a distance like me, you can check out their website at www.oldsouthernbbq.com. Again, that's oldsouthernbarbecue.com. You can get everything you need to do your own grilling, your own smoking right there at the house. They've got four awesome sauces. Southern Gals, Rich and Smoky, Mild and Tangy, and Chicago Fire. They've also got uh, award-winning rubs that you can have for, uh, you know, pretty much anything, but, you know, more specifically brisket and uh, and ribs. Awesome, awesome products there. And if you go uh, check out their website, you'll see that they've also got bundles put together to make it more affordable at OldSouthernBBQ.com. Just make sure you enter the promo code PackerNet15. That's capital P, Packer, capital N, Net, no spaces, one five, and that'll get you 15% off your order. Again, that's Old Southern Barbecue Smokehouse at OldSouthernBBQ.com. Appreciate them supporting the show. All right, this next segment here, uh, Tim, boy, it was interesting, bub. It was real interesting. I get online, and I can't remember who it was that tagged me. Um, you may see the, uh, see who it was when I share this tweet, but this was the tweet that the Bears fan shared, okay? <laughs> Um, let's see here. So it was actually at <laughs> him that being 11. <laughs> so he uh, tweeted out he puts quarterbacks who are still worse than Justin Fields. So he's saying that Justin Fields is better than these quarterbacks. Bryce Young, Kenny Pickett, Jordan Love, Desmond Ritter, Daniel Jones, Anthony Richardson, who's played two games, <laughs> right? and Ryan Tannehill. All right. And I seen that and I thought. How delusional do you have to be? I'm trying to see, is he better than any of these guys on that? Yeah, I'm going to keep that up for you a second. I'm going to pull up some stats here, all right? And and Well, maybe Daniel Jones. I mean, I don't know. Sometimes, right? Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Depends on the day. <laughs> yeah. So I thought, you know what? Maybe, maybe I haven't paid close enough attention to Justin Fields because I'm definitely not one of those fans that likes to trash talk. I don't go digging for this stuff. When someone tags me in it and I see it, it got a real good pop out of me, Tim. It really did. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, so I went to the statistics and said, let's look at this real quick. Let's just kind of see, all right, what's the deal here? Let's start with the uh, the great adjusted QBR, okay? Sorted by adjusted QBR, okay? Brock Purdy is in in first place, number one in the, in the entire league at 86.6. Guys, the last pick in the draft. How exciting is that? I mean, I hate the 49ers with a passion. I hate their – I don't want to say I hate their fans. I love rooting against the 49ers. I don't hate anybody. Um, that's a lie, but we'll pretend like it's true. <laughs> so, <laughs> Brock Birdie, the last pick in the draft, is leading the entire National Football League in adjusted QBR, okay, at 86.6. Second is Dak, Dak Prescott at 83.2. All right. We got Emilio calling in here, I believe. We'll get you here in just a second, Emilio. Um, we got Dak Prescott at 83.2. Tua Tunga Bailoa at 78.3. And then number four, guys, in adjusted QBR, Jordan Love at 75.5. Top five in adjusted QBR. So let's just compare Jordan Love and Justin Fields. Forget the other ones you mentioned for a second. Where Tim, ask me where Justin Fields is on this list. Um the it's gotta be bottom, bottom five <laughs> at least. You will find him. They they only rank the the I think there's a minimum amount of snaps to qualify to for this ranking. So they've got 32, right? So basically all 32 teams. It sounds like the starters, the ones who've seen significant time. Justin Fields is 31st at 22.2, 20, <laughs> Tim. So in that Bears fans' defense, Kenny Pickett is worse. So I guess he in that case he is better than Kenny Pickett, one quarterback on that list so now let's move on to wait um, a second i'm just looking at the fact that 403 idiots actually like that tweet <laughs> yeah where, oh, where are they at right where are y'all at right now <laughs> i'm going to share the screen here real quick before we go to Amelia. I, I want you you probably won't be able to see it but if you can it might help a little bit i want you to see these stats that i'm looking at it's probably going to be fuzzy i apologize i'm going to read it off to you guys so so that was qbr right adjusted qbr now let's look at um the passer rating. Let's sort by it, okay? Passer rating. Guess who's number one in the league, Tim? Um, that would be uh, – man. Would that be Jay Money? That is Jay Money. That is Jay <laughs> Love. He's got a, 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 a 
passer rating of 118.8, tops in the league. Now, listen, guys, this is why statistics, it's important to put things into context. Jordan Love's completion percentage is hot doo-doo, okay? There's no denying it, 55.8. And we've talked about it. You've heard me talk about on the post-game show that – the 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 accuracy has got to come. They've got to get the accuracy down because it's going to end up finally. It's going to eventually bottom right now. You can look at it and say, okay, that's just a number. Did he throw behind a defender or behind a receiver on purpose? That definitely could be the case, right? There could be times where there's an intentional incompletion because the play was broken and you just kind of live to play another day. Absolutely, but um, the fifty five point eight is just it's unacceptable for a starting quarterback. But man, that rating, oh my gosh, one eighteen point eight fourth in adjusted QBR, and first in rating, right? Now let's see where our boy Justin Fields is. Uh, let's go way down here in the basement. Wah, wah, wah. He's 26th with a 70.7, okay? Now there's still Bear fans going, well, that's just adjusted QBR and that's past the rating. What does it matter? That doesn't mean anything. Okay, let's. what about taking sacks? What about someone who doesn't know how to throw the ball away, right? Let's see who's taking the most sacks in the league. Hark, Justin Fields is tied for second with 10 sacks he's already taken this year. And some people will say, well, that means he's got a bad offensive line. No, you can throw the ball away. There's not a play design one where a coach is screaming, take the sack. It's no. read one, read two, get rid of the ball or throw it away. That's and you know what? He's probably getting those sacks because he's trying to run. Absolutely. He's trying, he's trying to run and he's not. And those are the times he's not getting out or not getting free. Yeah. He thinks he can cut the corner. And the next thing you know, you got a Lucas Van Ness sitting there licking his chops <laughs> and it's over. That's exactly what it is. So you may be saying, okay, well, that's just sacks. That's just adjusted, you know, QBR. That's just passer rating, right? Got it. Let's see who's leading the league in interception, shall we? So. Right now, leading the league in interceptions is Zach Wilson with four. Okay, surprise, surprise. Next is Ryan Tannehill with three, Jimmy Garoppolo with three. But actually, there's several people with three that are tied for second place with the most interceptions in the league, and one of those players is Justin Fields. So he's tied for second in interceptions, and again, he was tied for second in sacks taken, okay? And he's in the basement for QB, adjusted QBR and passer. Right? Like, how many more statistics do we need to look at here to determine? Okay, yeah, he's doo doo. I thought that was, uh, I thought that was interesting, and just wanted to kind of look in, look into that a little bit, man. And I know we've got Emilio on the line here. Emilio, how you doing, man? I'm good. How are you, fellas? Oh, we're good. We're just, we're just over here laughing at our boy uh, Justin Fields a little. It ain't even his fault, you know. There's people putting unrealistic expectations on a guy who has shown nothing. Oh. What, did, what did you think of those those numbers there, Emilio? I, I well, first off, I just want to wish you a happy birthday. Uh Lord, she did it, didn't she? She spilt the beans. Uh all right. but it's all right, Clayton, because because mine's coming up on Sunday. So we'll uh we'll Is have it really? a cool, yeah, yeah, we'll have a cold one together. But um yeah, no, those numbers are uh just a you know a telltale sign. Yeah, no doubt. What he's referring to here in the super chat. My wife, Mandy Bailey. Hey, appreciate the five dollars, girl. That's awesome. <laughs> hey, yeah, dude. that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, thank you for spilling the beans. It's funny, Tim. What did I tell you and Jacob last night? Don't we weren't going to talk about it on the <laughs> on the air. <laughs> God, I hate that girl. <laughs> that's oh man. All right, I mean, at least she gave you five bucks, though. That's love right there. I love it. Tim, do you do you think for a second she doesn't have my card? In that, <laughs> yeah, you gave yourself five bucks. Full circle, <laughs> full circle. You know that's what happened. Absolutely, it's, I told y'all her motto around here is "What's yours is mine, and what's mine is ours." That's what she says. All the time. So, um, Amelia, what you got, buddy? What's on your mind, Packers wise? Um, honestly, it was it was great to see him uh, in person. Um, the, the I don't, I mean, the team played. You know, well, it, it was a roller coaster of a game. I mean, I was up and down the whole time, just screaming. So, um, but uh, you know, seeing them, they're, they're quick for being young, but they were getting gassed out there. I mean, the third and the fourth started off okay, but you could just tell it was. I mean, we had the we had the crowd taken care of pretty much through the third, and then after that, it just 
I mean, it, it started humming in there. Your ears were ringing, and it, and it wasn't even like uh, you were talking about before. It wasn't even completely, completely packed. Um, but they, you know, they had it, and they, they could have kept the crowd out of it and kept them cruising. But it just, you know, it slipped away. It was just those, you know, the, the, the young mistakes, the silly mistakes, um, you know, things like that. Got it. Yeah. And, Tim, that's kind of how it felt watching it on TV, right? I mean, like, they were loud at first. You messaged me, Amelia. I believe it was you. There was 12, uh, a guy named 1265 is what he goes by on Twitter. He's sending me some pictures from his seats. Had like a half a dozen people message me, and they were like, it's loud in here, right? And then it got quiet, didn't it, Tim? You could even tell on TV. It got real quiet real quick. It sure did. And you know what, though, to Amelia's, Amelia's point is uh, it was. It was up and down, though, because I found myself – just when I was feeling like, oh man, we got this, like within minutes, it's like, uh, uh oh, we don't. What, what was that? What was that? And you could just, you know, that's that eerie feeling late in the game when you're you're winning but you're not. You know, it's like yeah. You, you, yeah. you can almost anticipate it coming, and it's like it's like watching one of them big cruise ships pulling into the dock, and you know, you know he's gonna smack into the dock. You know it's coming. <laughs> And there's not much you can do about it, but stand there and watch it. And it's, that's kind of like what, what we saw on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt, man. And what, once we stalled out that second drive in the fourth quarter, Milio, that's when I was like, yeah, this one's, this one doesn't feel like it's going to end well. Is yeah. That the vibe you got in house. Yeah. Yeah. It started getting, it started getting real quiet. And I mean, we were just, the fans there were just trying to hang on to anything like positive that we were getting out of it. But what we had, what was it? 11 yards or something. And, and the fourth, it was, I'm, what can we get behind? You know, a big tackle here or there, every third, every fourth, it felt like they just marched it right down the field and you just kept, you just saw them kept getting closer. And then when, you know, they went forward and all that. So it was just, it was, a. Uh, it was deteriorating for sure, but I mean, the walk out of there, they were all right, you know, shaking hands, saying it was a good game and all that. So that was cool. But um, I mean, if, you know, hey, we might see him again, we might see him again down there. So you never know with, with them 2 and 0 in the South. So yeah, no doubt. And Atlanta is a good sports town. Uh, we've been down for several Braves games and stuff. And, and I, of course, I would always wear Braves gear, but it just seems I never seen any Atlanta fans at any sport being rude to away fans and it's different now that's why when i hear about the stories in the northeast i'm like boy somebody come down here to a ball game that, after that's million, about what happened in miami yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah exactly with uh in new england where the miami fan beat a new england patriot fan to death like that's oh yeah true. yeah that was new england sorry yeah, yeah the miami fan did that yeah. like and and dude, emilio down here in the south if somebody tries that dude yeah, what it's, happened? Not, it's not happening that's a bad idea yeah you are not making it out of that stadium alive, man. No, Roadhouse. <laughs> Let me hit you with one of those real quick. It's been a minute. Roadhouse. That's the one. Um, nostalgic in the chat say, can we break down the Justin Fields all 22 versus the Bucks? I, want, I just want to giggle. <laughs> it was bad, man. It was real bad. Uh, did you get a chance to see any of that, Tim? Uh, a little bit. I saw a couple uh, interesting memes, too, from, from his performance in that game it was ugly man ugly um amelia you moralizing to be a receiver like in that off like you know you get open and it and and you just know the ball it's not coming (laughs) it's not coming because you didn't get open on the screen game tim that was the problem right right (laughs) yeah once they took the screen game away it's over right i did see that play where the, the defensive lineman was just like Hey, why are we even rushing him, man? Just let him try to let him try to throw it. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> That's what we need. That's what we want. Um, so here's a here's a cool comment. And Emilio, if you have to go, you jump off anytime, but you can hang out with us unless we get another call, man. Whatever you want to do. Um okay. cool. Um, Ryan Henson in the chat said, missed the beginning of the show, but have you talked about Quay's performance through two weeks? Finally starting to feel like he has quote it at middle linebacker, even after the loss, I could not agree more. And I, I'm telling you, I know I'm not as excited as Tim is, but I am very, very excited. Um, that is definitely Tim's guy. Let's start with Emilio with that question, and then I work my way up to you, Tim. Emilio, in person, did, did, did it feel like Quay popped as much as it looked like he did on TV? I mean, that guy was 
everywhere. I know he had the drop pick, and we talked about it, and it was a crucial play that didn't go our way. But other than that, I mean, he played pretty lots out, right? I mean, I think so. I think they're putting, you know, just about all the trust in him to try to, you know, take the reins and, and, and you know, lead this. I mean, he was back and forth. He was flying all over the place. The thing was they, they ran 70 plays. So, I mean, he was still hustling to the last. You know, he was out there, you know, grinding and hitting everyone. It was just – it was tough to, you know, see – it not all come together there. I mean, he was he was moving, but it was just not enough to, you know, to 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 bring it home. Right. Yeah. He the thing. The other thing too, Tim. Like going up, we watched it on Chalk Talk earlier. Me and Jacob, dude. His vertical leap. I don't know what it was at the combine, but he kind of out jumped that ball and it hit him in the face. That dropped interception. But that dude's got some hops, man. But uh, how are you feeling about your boy Quay this early in the season? No, oh, I I agree. I think the. Uh the quote it factor is there. And I hate to say, I told you so, but, but I did, <laughs> I, I, I told you so uh, future sure defensive player of the year candidate. Um, that's my boy Quay Walker. And uh, yeah, he's a freak athlete, man. Um, I mean, even the pick six, I joked about like, man, that guy could play tight end in a pinch if we really needed him to. Um, and I, I pray for the guy that he's blocking coming around the edge, but uh uh, Quay's just a really athletic dude. And I think like, to your point, yeah, maybe he just, I don't even think he needed to jump for that one. And maybe that's what kind of messed up the, the timing in his hands. By the time he got his hands in the back down into position, the ball just hit him in the face mask. Um, yeah. it happens that, that that's probably not a tight end <laughs> or a receiver. Um, same thing with Jair, you know, the reason guys become corners at different stages of their careers. Most of them are receivers who can't, and they end up playing DB. Um, but Quay is, uh, I, I cannot wait. I just, I, I'm glad that the concussion was, was uh, you know, minor apparently, and it was just protocol precautionary, and that wasn't serious. Hopefully he stays healthy like this, and uh, we get a full season out of him. Um, but I, I'm really looking forward to what we're going to be saying at the end of the year about Quay Walker, and I think it's going to be a lot of positive things. Um especially when you compare it to last year, because I thought he had a great rookie season that was overshadowed by a lot of, uh, you know, extracurricular things and things that didn't necessarily have to do too much with football. Um, but, you know, we sh he shored that up going into this year, and it shows out there on the field. Uh, he's staying home when he needs to stay home, and he's attacking when he needs to attack. And every single time we've had a skirmish or a fight or anything from preseason – up until this point in the season, Quay has been out of it, involved, keeping his nose clean, which is, uh, you know, something we as fans were concerned about with him going into the year. So mentally, physically, it's all there. Um, to Emilio's point, you know, you just got to just got to put it all together now consistently. Yeah. Right. And and to one more point there, I mean, they're always flipping Quay and, and Dre, you know, all the time, obviously. When it was Dre 10, 10 yards off on Bijan, we would have wanted Quay there, but they trust Quay in the middle to, you know, rally this team and bring it around him. You know, he he's the heartbeat back there. So, I, I mean, I, I think that's where they're driving at with this. Definitely. And, you know, one thing that stood out to me, Emilio, you may have noticed it as well. Um, I think it was – it wasn't the – it might have been the dropped interception. I can't remember which play it was, but I – to the best of my knowledge, I've seen them run dime one time, and it was because it was a third and long. They were in 11 personnel. We matched it with a dime, which is basically saying, look, you're going to have to pass. We're going to put six DBs in. So they mm -hmm. went with a two, three, six. Okay, so two down defensive linemen, two outside linebackers, and one inside linebacker. They took Dre off the field, and Quay Walker was the only linebacker on the field playing yep. coverage, right? And that that's really cool. says a lot. That with the green dot, right? Right. Yep. That's exactly it. They, because I remember seeing Drake come off, and it's like, man, they really do trust him. You know, he's he's coming off in a you know in a tough. I think it was third, second, or third, maybe. But I mean, it's they have the confidence in him, and it's just it's it's exciting to see. And I'm pretty sure I haven't been able to rewatch it, but the one time that I saw him run cover one man, you know, single high safety was the one time we got a defensive hold when they ran like a quick out because we were all bump and run man. And, and like, that was the one time I remember I was sitting there saying, I was like, oh, they're in cover one. And then bam, right. It's like, of course, the one time we're running man, we get a hold. And like, it's, it just, 
it was it was tough, but yeah. It's a whole different ball game in man coverage, and, and people just like to pretend like, oh, let's just run man. You know, the, the Devondre Campbell play where he was split out on B. John Robinson, and they just hammered that underneath route. That was because of man coverage. They had no choice. They're in man. Now, if you want to say they call a timeout, I get it. Probably should have called a timeout. Joe Barry doesn't call timeouts. That's on Coach LaFleur. But I'll tell you, man, it was uh, it was tough because right. I'm not a big man coverage person. Me, I personally, I like zone. I like zone match. I think it's great. I think it's – there's been so many teams that have won championships playing zone match. That seems to be too high when it warrants it. You can spin down with three, which we did a lot of that on Sunday. But I've got Quay Walker's card pulled up here. I know it's hard to see, like Dad Fish was saying in the chat. I apologize. There's nothing I can do to enlarge it anymore. But I'm going to read off what his PFF grade is here real quick. Defensive grade 88.8. He's the third highest graded linebacker in the entire National Football League. Out of 79 linebackers, he's third. Um, and his coverage grade, 90.6. He is he has the highest coverage grade of any linebacker in the NFL. Um, you know, pass rush grade, 63.8. That's 19th. And then, of course, uh, run defense grade, 38th, although his tackling has been really good. The run defense is just, just saying he's not really – um, I think those are more of grades of how gap scout, a gap sound he is, and you could see that last year. That was one of his weaknesses, for sure. So um, I think I think you got a huge ceiling there, very high ceiling when it comes to Quay Walker. I'm going to go ahead and pop this up here real quick, um, Tim. This is the matchup, okay? Uh, PFF matchup. I know it's hard for you guys to read. I'm going to try to read off and just point out what I'm going to do is point out what I feel like are the strengths, okay? This is the 11 personnel offense for the Saints this week, okay? The big thing that stands out to me, man, they have a wide receiver core. My goodness. Chris Olave, 83.6 on the year, and uh, Shahid at 80.9. So they have the sixth highest graded wide receiver in the league and the seventh highest graded wide receiver in the league. Oh, and that doesn't that's not even mentioning Michael Thomas, who's grading out at a 69.0. So essentially what you've got there, according to PFF, in the grades of an extremely short season, and again, we're not saying PFF is everything, you've got two number one caliber wide receivers, and your third best wide receiver happens to be your true number one, if that makes sense, and he grades out as a number two wide receiver. That seems to be the strength on offense there. Um, Tim, what do you think about this? Now, the the glaring uh, negative for them, right guard, right, Ruiz, 33.2. That seems to be the soft spot. Left tackle, 48.3. Left guard, 59.7. You got Derek Carr back there. And then, of course, they're showing Jamal Williams as the halfback. But if I'm understanding correctly, he's probably going to miss Sunday's game. So that helps the Packers a bit, too. I know we love Maul a ton, but i um, glad he's not going to be playing if that's the case for sure. But what do you think about that offense there and that, that wide receiver core, man? I'll tell you, the thing that stands out to me alarmingly is, um, like, Keyshawn on Olave in the slot is just going to be an absolute nightmare to, to watch. Um, I don't know about you, but that was the first thing just matchup wise that just, that's a concern, man. That's yeah. a concern because he, Keyshawn has not looked, and I'm not going to dog Keyshawn because I, I think we talk about dynamic athletes, you know, I'm not going to take anything away from him, but clearly the the value that he brings to our team is not, as a slot defender. Right. It's not. Yeah. So I don't no, know if we, do we see Carrington Valentine peppered in at some point? You know, my answer to that, I would love to see that. Um, Amelia, what do you think about that, man? How do you feel about Keyshawn in the slot? And I know it's hard to pick up on stuff when you're live there in person, you know, in a game, you got so much going on around you, but just out of two games here so far, how do you feel about Keyshawn in the slot? man? I, at first take, I haven't been able to go back and watch it, but I, it was I wasn't I was more unhappy with Keyshawn than I was happy with him when I was watching it live. Mm -hmm. But that might just be a little bias. Uh, but it's I mean, he's he's a great athlete and he's it just seems like it's always just like a second behind or or, you know, a step a step off or something like that. That is just there's there's something missing there. Um, but I mean, it, it is. He, he's there. He's an athlete, but I just I think he is missing something in that slot position. Shaq here, spinning fast acting pain relief for 2024 with Icy Hot. 
Take it from me. Sticking to your new workout routines can lead to sore muscles. Icy Hot starts working instantly to dull the pain with the icy cool sensation. Then, the warming sensation relaxes it away. Feel the power of Icy Hot's contrast therapy. Ice works fast. Heat makes it last. Icy Hot. We get it. Distractions happen. That's why we designed the fully electric, full-sized Volvo EX90 with the latest technology to keep you and those around you safe. Its two-sensor driver understanding system is designed to prevent distractions and help you stay focused. Reserve your Volvo EX90 today. Learn more at volvocars.com slash US. This episode is brought to you by Vital Farms. Isn't it bullshit to have to question where your food comes from? At Vital Farms, you can trace your pasture-raised eggs all the way back to the source, the pasture. On the side of each pasture-raised carton of eggs, you'll find the name of the farm where your eggs were laid. And when you look the farm up on their website, you'll get a peek at all the sunshine, fresh air, and open space the hens enjoy. Learn more and find out where to buy them at vitalfarms.com. Vital Farms, keeping it bullshit free. Going for your first ever run around the park. Literally running errands all over town. Running for the finish line and your personal best. If you run, you're a runner. Find the shoes and clothes to run your way at newbalance.com slash running. New Balance. Run your way. Yeah, it just... I was excited about the experiment. I thought he played pretty decent last year. And, you know, he got a, I remember he had an interception, a game ceiling interception playing the slot there. Um, but it just doesn't seem to have worked out. And you've got Carrington Valentine, who's shown, in my opinion, he at least deserves a shot. And who knows, maybe by doing that, Keyshawn Nixon, his return game improves, you know, a little closer to, to what we had last year, too. You know, there's all things that could be potentially happening for sure. Um, right. But, all right, with that being said, let me go ahead and remove that real quick. All and right. it's not that he would be coming, like, off the field completely. You know, you still would go into some of those dime looks where we would need, you know, two of them on and, and things like that. So it's not like he, he'd be off forever, but maybe it lights a fire under him or there's a battle there, you know, something like that where they're both, you know, getting after each other. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing. Competition is so underrated, man. These oh, teams, yeah. you know, there's, oh, this is our starting, you know, whatever it's like. Why? You should always be looking for the next better player, right? You, there should always be a competition. I understand you don't want to steal reps from your starting unit, but this whole just anointing people to starter, unless they're, you know, a quote unquote great football player, I think they're every player in the National Football League is good. And there should be, you know, more battles than not. And I think the great teams in the past, they've had position battles. There's no doubt about that. Um, one thing that that popped up here in the chat is we're we're kind of talking about the defense. Um, Manny, uh, Manny Diaz or Diaz in the chat said, is LVN out this week? Lucas Van Ness, is he out this week? We don't know yet, Manny. The injury report will drop tomorrow. We'll get a little bit better understanding. It was, it was my understanding it was an elbow injury, but mm-hmm. let, Tim, unless you've heard something, they've been pretty hush hush on that. Haven't they? I, I, everything I've heard was elbow. When I saw it live, it looked like shoulder, but I, everything that we're hearing, but again, this could be all speculatory, but it's something elbow related. Got it him. makes me think – I don't know what he did if he bent it backwards. I remember, you know, Rashawn had that um, – was that two years ago where he kind of hyperextended his his elbow late in the season, and it, it looked worse than it ended up being. So I don't I don't know. I guess we'll know injury report tomorrow, hopefully. Yeah. Well, I appreciate everybody giving the, the birthday wishes in the chat. You guys are awesome, really. I, I'm not going to – Comment on all of them, but thank you guys so much. I appreciate that. Um, here's an interesting comment from Packer Up. And Emilio, I want you to be honest, man. He <laughs> said uh, the Falcons are probably still pumping crowd noise in like they did back in the 2010s, LOL. Did you, do you think there was any of that going on, or was it really the fans being that loud, man? Um, I mean, can't say for sure. It felt like it was the fans. You know, they had that little, you know, fake decibel meter on the screen and stuff like that, bouncing back and forth. Um, I, I think in the in the true moments when it was, you know, third and one, fourth and one, you know, those those kind of like game changing moments, it, it did feel real. Um, but uh, 
no, it, it was humming in there pretty good in the fourth. In the end, they were they were bouncing around. But if I mean, like I said, if we have to go back down there and play them, you know, I, I think they'll be ready. And they have to go through losses. You know, it's going to happen. They they need it as a team to grow. You know, you learn a lot from losses. So I'm not worried about that. Um, yeah, got it. Doe Soldier says Justin Fields throughout his entire career, NFL. Uh, his NFL career has 26 touchdowns to 24 interceptions. Woo! Hot booty right there. Hot booty. <laughs> and then, of course, our showers in the chat says Joe Barry hits the dock 65% of the time. 65%. 65%. <laughs> oh, man. What, man. The hate for Joe Barry runs deep, man. I've been, I've been in, I don't want to say arguments all day on Twitter, but I have been tagged 500 times on Twitter to say. <laughs> And it's just hey, everybody's accusing this of being uh, uh, Joe Barry's burner YouTube account that he's he's behind this whole thing leading the charge. I'm just it's sure. like it's like just because you don't ev- eviscerate him every chance you get, it's like you're you're a Joe Barry apologist or Joe Barry defender or something. It's like we we have never once ever took that position. We've always said that it can't just be Joe exactly. Barry. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I pointed out on Twitter today. And, and I know our showers isn't saying that. And of course we're never going to pass up an op- opportunity to hit that Mark Murphy 65%. There's no doubt about that, but um, yeah, that's the thing I'm pointing out is like, I'm, I'm nowhere. Will you ever hear me say Joe Barry's a good coordinator? I've never said that. Now when people talk about firing him, okay, let's go look at the tape. I don't, I just don't see it. I'm seeing players drop interceptions. I'm seeing players lose contain. And, uh, now I could just jump in and and there's plenty of other podcasters that do that and they want to pile on and make funny memes and all that stuff and and get their clicks. That's cool. We're not here for clicks. We're here to watch the tape. If you see it, you got to say it. It's just the way it is. Um that's the way I view it anyway. And I understand that's boring. I get it. But still appreciate you guys hanging out with us while we're being boring for sure. Um let's see here. Hit this one real quick. We'll talk about offense. We'll get out of here. Um Milio, we appreciate you hanging out, man. This is this is good stuff. Um our shower says, I'm with Paul. We have three guys in Jair, Clark, and Rashawn who all have early issues. Not that they suck, but you got to have a tight game every game to be the call-out guy. We lack that. Yeah, you know, they they have struggled. Jair, this last game, man, I would not have been surprised if he graded out in the 40s. And when he came out at 55, I'm like, yeah, that's probably right. You know, I probably being a little bit emotional thinking he would grade out in the 40s. There were some people that were surprised, like, how did Jire grade that low? There's no way he's that bad. They, listen, those grades, they don't care what you've done in the past. It's it's specifically what have you done this game, right? And I think that's what I like about it, just a game-by-game game type thing. Let's hit on the offense real quick, and we'll get out of here. This is the Packers 11 personnel uh, matched up against – well, let me actually, let me go back to the defense real quick because we didn't hit on our strengths on defense. When you looked at our strengths on defense, Rasul Douglas right now, Hands down, been the best corner, 75.3. Jair Alexander, 62.5. Keyshawn Nixon, ugh, 56.7. You hit the nail on the head, Tim. That's the matchup right there for them. Uh, that's what I would be trying to exploit if it was me. There's no doubt about that. Rashawn Gary, 76.0. So, um, you know, it's not panic time yet. Just a bad game. I think he'll bounce back. Preston Smith, 73.1. Um, Kenny Clark, 69.2. Devontae Wyatt, 61.0. Of course, TJ Slayton will probably be playing that nose uh, that second defensive lineman next to Kenny more than Wyatt. Uh, Wyatt is having a, a rough start. There's no denying that. Of course, we talked about Quay Walker, 88.8. Devondre Campbell, 71.2, not bad. Savage, 61.8, about 20 points higher than he was last year. That's a good sign. Rudy Ford, Tim, we talked about it, buddy. 52.0, man. It's uh, it's it's struggle bus this year for Rudy Ford. Give me Anthony Johnson Jr., yeah, please. Hey. Why not, man? Why not? Carrington in the slot, Anthony Johnson Jr. at free safety. Let's see what we got. We're saying we're not saying every down. We're just saying pepper pepper these guys in, please. Yeah. And everybody, everybody go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just saying everybody else is young. Might as well give them a shot. Exactly. This is the time to do it, right? This is the time to do it if you're gonna do it. There's no doubt about it. The, right, let's let's hit off. Oh, right. The only other thing for you go uh, what is your take on us seeing our first Wildcat with Taysom Hill? Ooh, that's a great question, boy. That that sounds like disaster with our run defense. <laughs> that was that was my take when I was watching them against the Panthers. I 
caught a little bit of the Monday night game. It was he 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 runs it hard and downhill, and it looks like something they're going to need to uh, hit the tape and and study a little bit this week. Yeah, I need to do that. Matter of fact, I'm behind the eight ball already. I need to put on the Saints tape from that game last night and kind of see uh, how they attack that that Wildcat Tim. That that makes me a little bit shaky, man. What I wonder how they'll approach that. You know, we did show four man by him every time he's on the field. <laughs> <laughs> we showed a uh, a little uh, a set there when they got inside the inside the five, Emilio. We went to a uh, four like essentially a, a four three defense but we showed a six man front. So it's kind of that goal line look there. Right. We they were now don't get me wrong. They scored a touchdown, but maybe you get something like that if they try to come out in the wildcat, but Taysom Hill can spin that thing too. You know, he's mm-hmm. a horrible. Quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. yeah. I think the answer is the one that no one wants to hear because I'm the most boring football fan ever. Stay in your zone match, load the box with a spinner three, but you make sure you're keeping at least three up top, play it safe, make them use every inch of the field, let them make the mistake. And uh, let's win that turnover differential. It's just wild that we won the turnover differential and the middle eight last week and lost by a point. That, like I said, it's a, the first game. So we're now – that would have been the 20th game that I watched and kept up with that. And that's the first time in 20 games, 19 or 20 games, that the team that won both of those lost the game, which is just wild. But like I've told you guys before, it's like a 93 94% chance that that team wins if they win both of those categories. But pretty right. wild stuff for sure. Um, let's move to offense real quick, and then we'll row. So this is the Packers 11 personnel here. Um, they're projecting Rasheed Walker at left tackle. Of course, I think we would all say there's a good chance that David Bakhtiari will play left tackle. If that's the case, it's going to come down to Royce Newman or Rasheed Walker at left guard. We kind of talked about that earlier. Josh Myers, this is no surprise, 53.1. Uh, John Runyon, 60.3. Zach Tom, 75.7. Of course, we all know it goes without saying these are the overall grades. Uh, they're going to have much better pass blocking grades. But like Mike Wall said, they're, we, we kind of feel like they're asking the offensive linemen to do too much in the run blocking game. But again, that's how that lays out. On their defensive side of the ball, when you look at our offensive line versus their defensive linemen, you got Granderson, the seventh highest rated. Uh, graded edge defender in the league at 89.9. Um, you've got uh, Capacin, I think is how you say his name, 65.3 in the middle. Uh, Brissy, 63.2. And then, of course, Cam Jordan, always a stud at left end at an 80.7. That front looking pretty mean. Um, let's go to our receivers. Romeo Dobbs, 74.1. Uh, as it is right now, Dontavian Wick, 61.1. We're hoping we'll have Christian Watson back. I think we will personally because – was that you, Emilio, or was that someone else that said they noticed Christian Watson on the sideline he looked pissed off that he wasn't playing? Was that you or was that someone else? I, I didn't say that, but he did. He, I mean, even in pregame warm-ups, he looked like he was he was ready to play. I mean, he was out there catching everything, run, you know, jogging around. It was he, – he was ready, it seemed. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, he wants to get out there. And, and, of course, we know the Packers training staff. They're extremely conservative when it comes to that. But the one I wanted to point out in the slot there, and he plays flyer. He can play any any wide receiver position. Jaden Reed, 75.1. Tim, what a pleasant surprise, man. We've talked about it. It's exciting, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, he's he doesn't play like a rookie. He doesn't carry himself like a rookie. You know, he he's – He's going to have a great career. I mean, if you don't, if you get, if anyone doesn't see that, they're not, they're not watching football. I mean, Jaden Reed, and like you, to your point, Clayton, I, I think you hit the nail on the head when you said, you know, he's not, he's not an exclusive slot guy. We tend to want just because of his body type and his, you know, size and that kind of thing. We, we want to say he's a slot. I mean, you're right. I, I'll play him you know, split out all day. Um, and, you know, as we've seen, we can run them with the, uh, you know, we can run them with the jet sweeps and jet motion. So, I mean, really having Reed is especially nice when we, do, when we have been down uh, Watson because he, he brings that in, you know, especially without Aaron Jones as well, you know, you lose dynamic playmakers like that. It's nice to have another, another one ready to roll that's versatile enough to run some of those different plays. So yeah, Jaden Reed is, Man, he, it's gonna another guy. It's gonna be fun to watch this year. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, so when you look at the wide receivers matched up, if you insert Christian Watson, you feel a whole lot better. Although Tay Wicks, 
that touchdown catch and run, man, that was a lot of fun to watch. We broke that down on Chalk Talk a little. It was a little switch slot cross concept. Really cool. First time I've ever seen Matt LaFleur run that. I thought it was a really neat design. Kind of kept the defense on their heels. And, of course, Tay Wicks, you know, breaking tackles and uh, dragging defenders to do what he had to do to get in the end zone. When you look at the wide receivers, though, if you insert a Christian Watson, you got Dobbs at 74.1, Jaden Reed is 75.1. Christian Watson's grade last year was in the upper 70s, I think 76, 77-ish. They're cornerbacks. They got one of the best. He's he's the highest grade cornerback in the entire league right now in Lattimore at 87.9. On the other boundary, you've got uh, Adebo at 54.5. And then in the slot, they've got the uh, the their slot defender there, Taylor, 45.3. So it kind of looks like you want to attack the slot. I don't know much about them without watching the tape, whether they play pr- primarily zone or man. I know what they used to run way back in the day when Sean Payton was there. They love dime packages. They love leaning on faster personnel over heavier personnel. Um, so maybe this is a game we try to run the rock, especially if Aaron Jones is healthy. But uh, at linebacker, they're looking good too. They got Davis in the middle, 89.7. Werner at 76.1. They got, of course, the Honey Badger back there at strong safety, 71.4. And then May um, at 60.1 at free safety. Um, Just on the surface here, when you look at the matchups, it kind of feels like their defense matches up pretty good with our offense. But again, uh, I think the way to attack them is probably with your playmakers. They're Jaden Reed, Christian Watson. If you you have Christian Watson on the field and you get him matched up against a Debo, and they're doing anything other than playing too high shell, you should be able to take some shots over the top or at least give that look to kind of soften that box. Um, whoever Latimer's on, probably a good idea for Jay Love just to stay away from him. Wouldn't you say there, Amelia? Yeah, yeah, I would think so. Um, I, I think Love would be happy, you know, to get his deep threat back. Um, not like anyone else can't do it, though. I mean, I like I said, I, I texted you, I said, watching that trick play open up, you know, first – first snap it was it was pretty wild you know wicks is, he's got moves he got down there and he, he tackled him just to be safe because that was that was going to be a house call i think but um you know it's uh jay loves smart it's just some of those deep balls they they came off his hand a little or they you know the, the spiral wasn't super tight you know it, some of them are a little wobbly and then you know just seemed a, a smidge off but um like you said that that 55 percent has got to come up but He's got great balls, and, he, and he's you know he's putting it in the right areas. They just need to be tightened up. Yeah, definitely. Mike Hebring in, in the chat. Thank you for the super chat. He said, "Don't forget, Jordan Love hasn't played at home yet." Man, that's exciting, dude. Him running out of that tunnel, Tim, for the first time. Whoo, it's gonna be good, right? Mm-hmm. He's he's gonna get the the full gamut. This this is gonna be great because you know he got to. Uh, he got a little taste during the preseason, which I'm sure he loved. But uh, and of course, you know, th- this there'll be a lot of firsts this year that we'll talk about. But you know, Jay Money is so smooth, man. He's not going to be uh, he's not going to be caught like a deer in headlights at all. I think he's going to embrace this moment. The fans are going to embrace him. Uh, if anything, w- we could see uh, another one of these three to five tutty type performances. So uh, I'm looking forward to Sunday. Yeah, what's crazy when we were doing chalk talk earlier too. If you if you took away that fourth quarter, I know that sounds silly. I know we can't do that, and we're kind of thinking extremely positive here. But when me and Jacob were looking, he pointed out the stats before that fourth quarter, and Jay Jayla was like, I don't know, like twelve of fifteen. Like he was, I mean, he was on point. And then the fourth quarter happened, and it was just incompletion, 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 incompletion. Right? But he did to me. He didn't look rattled. It's just a uh, if it could go wrong, it went wrong. You know, there's just no two ways about it. But uh, thank you so much for the super chat, Mike. We're excited about seeing that, man. And I think, like Andy mentioned, that there's only been 11 passes he's thrown at Lambeau. Of course, uh, this will be his first start, you know, um, as a starting quarterback coming out of that tunnel at Lambeau Field. So uh, I like what AJJ is saying here. Run at Lattimore. His, his weakness is rush D. All right. I'll, I'll see what you're saying there. Um, let's see here. Ch-ch-ch. I think that's pretty much it. I think we're going to wrap up right there. Emilio, this was a, a pleasant surprise having you hop on, man. Um, we need to do this more often. It's a lot of fun. Definitely. Um, yeah, appreciate Definitely. you. Appreciate you getting in here. And, again, we want to thank our sponsor, Old Southern Barbecue. Appreciate them supporting the show. Capital E, capital N, Packernet 15. <laughs> 
I love it. You're always correcting it in the chat too. Like yesterday, I completely forgot it. I got people in the chat. Hey guys, make sure you get that discount, dude. Uh huh. Yeah. So good stuff. Um. All right, let's get out of here, Tim. You got any parting thoughts? Uh, real quick, can you can you pull up that last screen before we get out of here? You had uh, our offense. Oh yeah. Maybe, yeah. And our and right, defense. This. I, I take a look and it, it really reminds me of what they just dealt with in Atlanta when we look at uh, mm-hmm. uh, th- their edge guys. I mean, you know, Granderson and Cam Jordan, I mean, are going to eat your lunch all day if you're getting too fancy on that offensive line. So to Mike's point, uh, they got to simplify um, because we saw, um, what was it, Clayus Campbell and uh, uh, his name slips my mind now from Atlanta. Um, oh, on Yamada, on Yamada. On Yamada. Yeah, they, th- those guys and were Grady, just. And was it? Oh, uh, Grady Jarrett. Yeah, Grady, Grady Jarrett. Jarrett. That's what I'm thinking of. So you're. Th- this is almost like that all over again, you know. So right. our offensive line is whoever it is out there, you know, guys got to be on their tippy toes for real because that that could be a problem for us. Yeah, definitely. Emilio, you got any parting thoughts, Bob? Like I said, the. Um... The, the run game needs to sharpen up. We need to make it, you know, a little bit simpler. Let's just smack a couple heads across and, and see. You know, it doesn't have to be every play. Let's just see what happens. But, um, you know, Matt LaFleur is going to be excited for a homecoming. We, we've got him through a win, through a loss on the road both times. And I think, uh, you know, being at home, being ready to go this week and then on to a short week, right, for Thursday night. So um, we got a lot of football coming up in a short time. So uh, he's got to get them ready. Definitely. It's uh, it's here, man. It is upon us. We are in the battle. There's no doubt about it. Um, one thing that kind of comes to mind to me, and we'll wrap up with this, what you were talking about with the edges there, Tim, uh, maybe, you know, one of the things that he talked about is 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 allowing some more double teams in the running game, he being Mike Wall. Um, let's, let's pound that thing in the A-gap, man. Use some double mm-hmm. teams on the edge. Take advantage of the fact that their interior looks, is, according to PFF, seems to be soft. Again, that yep. doesn't mean they are, but that's kind of on the surface what it looks like. So, pound the ball in the rock, uh, pound the rock uh, in between the uh, the A gaps there, A and B gaps. Run a little play action, take advantage of that slot, and see if uh, see if we can come away with some explosives. But I think it's going to be fun, especially man. with with AJ Dillon. As if, if right. Dillon's going to carry the ball, I mean that's, that's what he does, that sounds bro. like something that might play to his strengths. Right. What's wrong with the 21-20 ISO? You know, like yep. just. Line- Go straight ahead. That's 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 why I love Dylan and Pistol because he can he can step downhill immediately. Like he does all right in sidecar, but every time I saw him in Pistol, he felt comfortable because he's coming downhill. I don't care if he's back stack, whatever. No, he he did it at Boston College. That's why we drafted him. Exactly. Hey, this is what he does well. Let's don't do that anymore. (laughs) What? (laughs) (laughs) But what do we know though? Right? We're just a. We're just three morons that love Packers, so it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're going to get out of here. I want to thank everybody in the chat. Thank you all for the birthday wishes. Really appreciate it, Mandy. Uh, thank you for spilling the beans, making me feel <laughs> awkward. I'm sure my face turned red. I, I, I'm I a don't handle stuff like that well. <laughs> but <laughs> And Emilio, of course, they, they tag-teamed it there. So yeah. I appreciate you, buddy. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm a man. I'm 40. <laughs> exactly. Let's hit, it. Let's hit it one time. I know I got it here. I'm a man. I'm 40. I'm actually 41, so there you go. <laughs> there <we> go. <laughs> it still applies. But, uh, all right, appreciate everybody in the chat. You guys are awesome. For those of you listening on the pod, thank you for making us a part of your day. As always, let's go out and be the change we want to see in the world and go pack go. The power sweep. Actually, it's the, it's the lead play in our, in our offense. Double tackle. Defensive end, he's over, and he's back.